off to the store for some hollow points and candles. I've already got some ash out back from a big bonfire I had a couple of nights ago. Also, OC time. This one is from my senior year of high school, about 10 years ago. Be me. Just started lurking on K. Really want to go in the woods. Recently, got my FID. SKS for my birthday. Fuck yeah. Invite my only has guns friend along to go camping near Appalachian Trail. He says, yes. Brings a Winchester lever action in 3030. Plan is to start at the northern part of Massachusetts. Follow the trail south for three days. We brought plenty of food and fuel. Not much water as we plan to be near rivers most of the time. Buddy brought a harmonica. From now on, I'll call him John. We get dropped off near where we want to start and start hiking. Covering pretty decent ground for the first few hours. Slow down a bit after a quick lunch. Still moving along pretty well. We stop for the night, set up our tent. I start the fire, boil water we collected. John cooks up some of our food, plays harmonica a bit. We're just sitting around the fire, eating and talking. Brings up the fact that we haven't seen anyone all day. He shrugs it off. It's a bit shitty weather and cold, so it's not that strange. Put out the fire and we go to bed, sleeping with unloaded rifles. We get up the next day, strike camp, eat cold breakfast, and start hiking again. Suddenly, we hear loud footsteps coming up the trail behind us, running really fast. We look behind us, figure it's a trail runner or a deer running from something. Ready rifles, just in case. The second we turn around, the sound stops. We are a little weirded out, but continue along for a bit. I realize that the woods are quiet as fuck ever since we heard the running. Mention it to John. Relax, man. It's almost winter. Most things are probably just hiding away in their burrows. Decide I'm just being a pussy. Ignore the silence. We stop for a lunch near a stream, and John collects a bit of water from it. Sniffs at it to make sure it's semi-clean. Recoils. What the fuck? Anon, smell this water. Wary that he is going to splash me in the face. I take it and smell it. Oh god, this is awful, dog gif. Smells like rotten meat and piss. We follow the stream up river to see if a dead deer or bear fell in and is rotting away in it. After a few minutes of walking, we come to a cave that the stream is flowing out of. John walks in right away. Hey, John, wait wait a minute, we shouldn't... Oh, come on, Anon. I've got a flashlight and I'm not going to fall in, so let's just check it out. Okay, I guess. Grab my own flashlight and my SKS. Following John into the cave, we come to a huge-ass cliff where the water falls down. Not really a waterfall. It's smooth as hell made of this really shiny black rock. All right, John, looks like we can't go in any further. Let's let's go back. Okay, Anon, just let me look over here. I thought I saw, aha, look at this, man. A staircase cut into the side of the cliff, barely visible unless you look straight at it. John immediately starts climbing up. I follow him, but I'm just about shitting my pants. We're about halfway up, when suddenly, we hear this voice. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Just sounded like the same thing, over and over, in the exact same tone of voice, exact same inflection. It sounded like a broken record. The voice was creepy as fuck. It sounded like a human voice, coming through a fucked up speaker crackly at the edges, and sort of deeper than it should be, obviously feminine. It's coming from the top of the cliff. John shouts up to it. Don't worry, we're coming for you. Just hold on. John, wait a goddamn minute. What the fuck, Anon? Are you just gonna walk away from somebody who might be stranded or hurt? No, but I don't think that- 
Then let's fucking go. He double times it up the stairs. Rifle slung over his shoulder. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Voice gradually getting louder and more distorted. He's going a lot faster than I am. That's what saves me. He gets to the top of the stairs, shines flashlight towards the sound. Ma'am, are you- Suddenly, stops talking. I'm just a flight below the top. I can hear him walking. Sounds really jerky, but steady, like a metronome or something. Steps suddenly stop. At the exact same time, the voice stops yelling for help. I just barely hear John whisper, Of course, whatever you need. Crunching noise. Sound of dripping liquid. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. It's a different voice, and it takes me a second to recognize it. It's John's voice. Oh shit, friends. MP3. Fucking sprint out of there. It's a miracle I didn't break my neck on those fucking steps. Managed to contact a friend who was going to pick us up in two days. Tell him something got John. Freaking out. He calls the cops slash forest department. Tells me I have to meet them near a ranger station at a small town. I manage to get out of the woods. Meet up with cops. I claim a bear ate him. Lots of questioning. Realize they think I might have murdered him. Finally, break down and tell this old grizzled ranger dude what really happened when we're alone. He just nods. There are some strange things would happen up in those mountains. Might be. I'll head up there soon and take care of it. What the fuck? Is this guy serious? He smiles at me, and nods towards the wall of his office at the ranger station. A bunch of mounted skulls. They look like fucked up deer slash moose slash goat heads. Curvy horns. Long jawbones. Huge ass eye sockets. Now, I'm off to kill that bear of yours. I'll make sure them city boys know that you didn't do nothing. And I'm sorry about that friend of yours. G good hunting. Thank you kindly. I still can't get over it. Especially since, about two weeks after that, the paper printed a story about an individual who wished to remain nameless that had taken down a rabid grizzly not too far off the Appalachian Trail. A friend of my dad's would babysit me sometimes when I was little. Mom wasn't in the picture, and he used to tell a story to me that scares the absolute shit out of me to this day. Dad's friend, I'll call him Bob, is driving a rig out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere Oregon. Has to make the delivery by the following morning, so he decides just to drive through the night. It's like one in the morning, no one else is out on the roads. Hasn't seen another car in probably a hundred miles. He is literally in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, the whole entire sky lights up. Instantly, like daylight. Bob fucking slams on the brakes. Has no idea what the hell is going on. Everything stays lit up for a good solid 10 seconds. He can see everything. Whatever's happening, it's not lightning. It doesn't stop or flicker at all. Bob hunkers down, anticipating imminent nuclear devastation. Suddenly, sky goes dark again. No sound, no blast wave. He sits there in the middle of the road, waiting for almost five minutes, then decides to keep going. Figures it was a meteor or something. Goes about two miles up the road and sees a car with its flashers on stopped in the middle of the road. Stops a good distance away from it. There is not enough room to go around it. Front end of the car is crumpled like it hit something. Bob figures they probably hit a deer that got spooked whenever the meter went over and ran into the road. He gets out of the cab and goes to see if the driver is okay. Driver is sitting on the ground by the driver's side door. Has his knees up and is resting his head on his arms. Hey, buddy, you okay? Bob calls. He stops about 10 feet away 
for seemingly no reason. Something about this whole situation feels weird. Bob is one of those guys that always listens to his gut, so he stays put. God, my head is killing me, the guy says. But he doesn't lift his head, so it's muffled. Did you hit a deer? Bob asks. He's getting more and more uneasy. Something's wrong, but he still can't figure out what it is. The guy says he think he might have hurt his head, asks Bob to please help him. Bob takes a step forward, but his instincts are going apeshit. He looks at everything again. That's when he notices it. The fucking car is all wrong. It looks like what someone thinks a car looks like. It has all the right pieces, but there's nothing extra, if that makes sense. Bob says it looked like a cheap Hot Wheels knockoff. It just looked wonky and wrong. He looks around at the back of the car and realizes that not only is there no license plate, there's not even a trunk. It's just one solid piece of material with taillights put in it. There's no manufacturer or model names. Bob knows cars, and this thing is nothing he's ever seen before. From where he's standing, he can see there's no tailpipe or even hubcaps. It's just the shape of a car. He starts to back up, and the guy asks him for help again. Bob tells him he can't help him and that he'll call a tow truck when he gets to the next town. The guy lifts his head and looks at Bob, tells him he thinks he might have a concussion. Something is really, really wrong with the guy's face, but again, it takes a second for Bob to figure it out. The next part is exactly how Bob described it. Everything on the man's face was where it should have been, in their normal positions. He looked totally normal, except for the fact that his eyes and mouth were on upside down. Bob goes apeshit and sprints back to his rig, climbs in, locks the doors, just in time for the man to slam into the door behind him. How the fuck did he get there so fast? He knocks on the glass and smiles at Bob, but because his mouth is upside down, it looks like he's screaming. Tells Bob to open the door so he can come in. Bob fucking floors it. He doesn't care if he hits the guy or not. His truck easily pushes the car out of the way. Whatever it is, it's light and it makes no sound when he hits it. Unfortunately, it's an anticlimactic ending. Bob got where he was going fine. No other problems. My dad knows the story, but I don't think he believes it. But Bob tells it to everyone he meets, so he obviously does. He's absolutely adamant about the guy being an alien. Years later, I heard about the Thatcher effect, and nearly had a fucking heart attack when I saw it. I showed one of the pictures to Bob, and he wouldn't even look at it. He says it's exactly what the guy looked like. Pick very much related. A little background to start. I work as a topographer slash tracker for a local group in Colorado and Wyoming. My job consists of surveying areas and mapping out common game trails in popular places for herds to gather for hunting and ecological purposes. When I'm out, I'm mostly on an ATV until I find a game trail, which then I map out on foot. When I'm going long distances, I stop at outposts that have been set up along the trail to refuel or rest for the night or go to in case of hazardous weather. I've seen some things that have made me question what's out there, such as mutilated deer, bull elks torn in half, holes dug through the fresh body of animals from the inside out. While seeing things like this is unsettling, I usually shrug them off as some kind of nasty parasite or bear attack. The thing that made me wonder whether or not I was up against something much bigger didn't happen till recently, while near the Wyoming slash Colorado border in between outposts in the first week of December. To start, it was snowing fairly lightly, kind of spitting, really. The pines stopped most of the snow falling on me while I was walking back to my ATV. 
While it was snowing lightly, the lair on the ground was at least a foot deep off trail, making it pretty difficult to move or be quiet while lumbering through it. I got on the ATV and drove about half a mile up the trail, almost crossing over into Wyoming, when I noticed another trail that looked freshly made. When I got off the ATV, I noticed some small droplets of blood in the snow going down the trail, with what looked like bear prints with something dragging behind it. I grabbed my gun off the rack on the ATV and slung it over my shoulder. The trail looked fresh, but the prints and blood were starting to get covered in a layer of snowfall. While walking along the trail, I noticed something kind of weird in the middle of the bear tracks. It looked like a human foot, almost, but rather elongated and thin, with only four toes on the end. The tracks twisted within the bear prints themselves, almost like the animal's foot spun a bit coming out of the bear track. I continued on while occasionally glancing into the tracks, and sure enough, the prints were still there. When I got to the end in a large clearing, I stopped following the bear tracks. Something about being in this large clearing with an unknown animal was making me uneasy. I mapped it out and placed a red line over it, indicating a high predatory area. On the way back, I noticed something strange about my own boot prints. Now, I'm a pretty big guy, standing at 6'2", with a size 13 boot. But whatever had made the tracks had a footprint significantly larger than my own. But that's not the worst part. Whatever it was had followed my boot prints back, heading in the same direction I was. Whatever it was, it had snuck behind me and was heading towards my ATV. I shouldered my rifle and put a round in the chamber. I walked back, glancing down every so often to see if the twisted footprints were indeed still in mine. When I got back to my ATV, I noticed that the prints circled my vehicle and stopped behind it and shuffled a bit. I then noticed my jerry can was missing, and that thing had left a trail of gasoline down the road from where I came. I hopped onto my quad to get going in the opposite direction, hoping to distance myself from whatever stole my fuel. After crossing over into Wyoming, I noticed that everything was rather still. It was still snowing, but the flakes almost seemed to be suspended in the air. Not falling, but not static either. I couldn't hear anything when my ATV was shut off. No animals, no snowfall, not even my own breathing almost like something had stopped all sound from existing. I found another game trail, this time a few hundred yards off the trail. I dismounted and walked towards the opening in the trees, with pristine snow covering the rocky terrain around me. All around the trail, I would catch fleeting glimpses of a shadow. Not shadows, no, just one, moving along the trail with me. I put it off to lack of sleep making me see things. On my way back, I got a chill up my spine. In my own boot prints were the same tracks I saw at the last trail. The same twisty human-like print, but this time, something was touching the ground in front of them. A swipe here and there, almost like whatever it was was tracking me by my scent. I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. I reached for my sidearm, kicking myself for leaving the rifle on the ATV. I heard a ragged breath from my left. Like if he collapsed a lung on a deer, I drew and fired into the trees, striking an aspen and blowing a hole in its small frame. I saw nothing. No movement. No snowfall. No animal. I started getting the same feeling I was getting from the clearing, and ran back to my quad. Whatever had been following me beat me there. I followed the tracks around my ATV like last time, and stopped to see what it took next. It took my rifle. My rifle. A large rifle that would require something very large to carry it off in its mouth, or something with hands and the strength to carry it. I looked a little closer at the prints, and found something I had missed every time. 
inside the footprints, right where the twist ended, I noticed four very long appendages peeking through the snow. It looked like a monkey's foot, but longer and more hand-like, but not quite enough to be human. I mounted and hit the throttle, spinning out a bit until I got traction and went shooting down the road. I was too low on fuel to go back to a main road where I could get help and was forced to go to my next outpost. When I arrived, this small cabin slash hut-like structure looked so comforting and protective, I almost cried. It had fuel for the quad, a safe place for me to sleep, and a radio for help. The sun was setting, and I was firing up the stove after starting at the generator when my radio crackled and came to life. I jumped when I heard the static hiss. I ran over to the radio and requested an evac or an extra team for a safe escort. When asked why, I lied and said I was being hunted by a bear and lost my rifle on the trail. The voice on the other end scoffed, but obliged. My team would be there by morning. When I hung up the radio and started to get comfy and safe, I heard a loud thump hit my door. I froze in my bed, not knowing what to do. I finally got up, after debating whether or not to just hide. I'm no coward, I thought. I grabbed my sidearm and walked towards the door. I peeked out the small window to see if someone or something was out there. All I saw was darkness. Stupidly, I opened the door and shouted, If you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. You took one of my guns, but I still have the other. No response. I looked at my door to see what hit it, and only saw the remnants of a snowball. A fucking snowball. I waited to see if I could see any movement, when another snowball came flying out of the darkness to my left and hit my shoulder. You better run, or I'm gonna fucking kill you. I yelled as I slammed the door shut and ran out to confront whatever threw the snowball. I ran towards where the ball came from, watching for prints or signs of movement. I saw something in the darkness that looked like a man had fallen and was scrambling on the ground to get up, making that raspy breathing noise. I stopped and aimed, but saw that whatever was in front of me had continued to run on all fours at an alarming speed faster than I could run. I froze when I saw the black silhouette dart off into the darkness, not sure what to do. After listening and hearing nothing, no breathing, no running. After listening and hearing nothing, no breathing, no running. I headed back to my hut. Once I got to the clearing my hut was in, I stopped, relieved I had made it out of the woods alive. I took a deep breath and calmed myself down and started walking towards my cabin, illuminated by the lone porch light on the deck. I looked down, trying to follow my tracks back to conserve energy, and nearly vomited. The twisted footprints were in my tracks, heading towards the cabin. I saw the trail heading back towards my cabin, each twisted footprint slamming down into my own until it got to my porch. Amidst all the snow dragged on by the thing, was my rifle and jerry can, placed neatly on the porch, leaning against the wall. The door was askew and jarred open a bit. I could have sworn I saw the leg of the thing dart in as soon as I looked at it. I wish I could say I bursted in there and shot the thing dead, but I was too frozen with fear to do anything but stand there. I wish I could say I was brave and fought the good fight, but I didn't. I crumpled onto the ground, cradling my knees until sunup. I had spent six hours in the darkness, waiting for whatever that thing was to come out and finish me, but it never happened. My crew found me covered in snow, with my gun drawn and pointed at my cabin. They questioned me and searched the cabin. All of my food was eaten. My bed was torn up and made into a makeshift nest thing like a dog would sleep in, and the radio was destroyed, but no sign of whatever was hunting me. Not my story, something a Native American guy posted a while ago, 
but it's some of the creepiest shit I've ever heard. My dad picks me up from school in his pickup truck after he got off work one winter's night. We were driving on a long stretch of road that goes through the woods. It's pitch black outside. The truck's radio didn't work, so I was just sitting, staring straight out at the road, getting hypnotized by the passing trees. Suddenly, I started to get an intense sensation that something is watching me through the window to my right. I started to turn my head to see what it is when my dad yells, Don't look! Immediately, start to hear tapping on the window right next to my face. Heart stops. Only time I ever saw fear on my dad's face. He started praying loudly in Navajo. Stare straight ahead, heart pounding, not daring to look out the window. Suddenly, the truck dips as the weight falls into the bed. Whatever the fuck this thing is, is in the back, right behind my head. Start to hear tapping on the window behind me. My father makes me look at him as he continues to pray. Close my eyes tight and wish for it to be over. After a few endless minutes, the truck dips again and the tapping stops. My father says, Tomorrow we will ask your grandfather to say a prayer so the evil will forget our faces. English to Navajo equivalent. Drive home and lie awake in bed all night. Father and I never talk about it again. Parents die in a car wreck. A week or so later, I am laying in bed, crying myself to sleep, as usual. Hear a creak on the floor outside my room, and giggling. My dog perks up and starts growling like crazy. My mom slowly leans around the corner of the door. She looks different, and her movements are all wrong, jerky and twitchy. Go to sleep, Anon. It'll all be better soon. It's her voice, but sounds clotted somehow. My blood is ice water. My dog is whimpering and cowering now. Mom jerks back around the door. Another creak. My dad leans around the corner. It's okay, son. We're gonna be a family again soon. Just fall asleep. And giggles. Like my mom, his movements are all spastic and fucked up. His face is a grinning rictus. He jerks his head back out of sight. My heart is pounding. Quickly and as quietly as I can, I grab my phone and dial 911 to report a home invasion at my address. I can hear movement and that insane giggling from the hallway. I'm laying there with tears rolling down my face from fear. I don't know how long it was until I saw flashing lights outside the house and muffled shouts. Hurried movement of the hallway, something crashes to the ground, muffled shouts from downstairs as the cops come through the front door. Thank you, God. They search my house, and afterward, a cop approaches me, white as a sheet. Anon, it's hard to tell you this, but we found your parents' faces on the ground outside. That was almost ten years ago. They never found the sick fucks that did it, and I still have nightmares 